screen as seen what you see when you resume the computer from sleep or boot it up. The background is a picture that the user chooses. So this is the first place you can customize the entire screen. You see basic information, time, dates, uh, network and battery. You also see information from apps that you choose. In this case, I've got the data usage on my mobile broadband from the app. And, uh, okay. So, swiping up on the lock screen, you see the picture password. And have, have any of you been to the Building Windows 8 blog? Yeah. Okay. So, did you see, uh, see the article on picture password? Yeah. Yeah, so that walks through the security of this compared to a text password. So a picture password is made up of three different gestures. A gesture is either a line, a circle, or a dot. And they're somewhere on the screen, and you have a picture from your own, you know, from your own collection that you chose when you set it up that you use to help remember where <coughs> your gestures are. So of course, I've changed mine for each interview. In this case, I've got the tree in the background here, the rock, and the little mossy one. So the leg is designed in quickly, and then, and then you can see the start screen. The start screen is the new app launching experience. It's basically your home for Windows 8, and you can see the different tiles that are available here. You've got information visible from all the apps. They're up to date. It's customized. You can rearrange the tiles and put them in whatever order you want. So let's, uh, you can move, uh, move a tile with any group, you can move tiles between groups. And you notice I have touch points turned on so you can see where I'm touching on the screen. That's not, uh, not on by default, but you can turn it on for projection. Notice how it moves schools nice and smoothly as I click back and forth. So when you're on the when you're on the start screen, you've got both the new metro style apps and you have desktop apps. So these are things that you're used to from Windows 7, like New Visual Studio, uh, Windows Explorer. All those things live on the desktop, and the desktop is still there. <coughs> but metro style apps are a new way of programming. So it lets you use different programming languages, same APIs. We have the Windows Runtime APIs that are exposed into the .NET languages, into C++, into JavaScript. So you can now write a Windows app in HTML and JavaScript. You can actually mix JavaScript and C++. If you want to write the UI in HTML, but then the code behind it in C++, that's possible. Your choice of languages, and we expect more to be added over time. So, to give you an example app here, uh, this one that I've been dragging around, let's jump into the weather app. And assuming I still have enough information. up the charms part. This is the way you interact with Windows, and it's available wherever you are. So you can hit start and get back to the start screen. We can bring up the charms and go to settings. And this gives you system settings about notifications. Uh, I can turn the computer off, adjust the screen brightness. signed in earlier, but it may have ticked me off since the PC went to sleep. 
name of it is. So, the facade screen over here is being used for the terms bar. If we swipe in from the bottom, that brings up the options for the app. And these are the tools that the app wants to keep out of the way, but that you can use to interact. So in this case, adding and removing a stock term and look at it. Going over to the left-hand side of the screen, this is how you change apps. So you can drag things off of the back stack and rotate the first. And if we had a live screen resolution here, I would be able to take one of these apps and drop it in on the side. And the room would have two that are visible at once. That's possible on the data resolution here. On the projector, it's forcing me to a standard 4x3. So you don't get a snapped out of the 4x3 screen. <coughs> So along with the Metro style apps, as you might expect, we have a Metro style version of Internet Explorer as well. And you see when I'm entering an address here, we get the on-screen keyboard. This has a couple of different modes. There's full-size one if you're if you feel like typing directly on the, on the screen with it laying down like this. We also have one that's more optimized for holding it from the sides. So we've got a split keyboard that you can use for thumbs. Yeah. And if you're a fan of the stylus, we still have uh, handwriting recognition. So, and you can see that with Internet Explorer, web pages are treated the same way that apps are and that the web page gets the entire screen, and if you want to interact with the controls, you swipe up from the bottom or down from the top, and there you get the collection of tabs that are open there. So Metro style apps are more sandboxed than existing Windows Win32 apps. The apps don't know about each other, they don't get full privileges, they get the privileges that they manifest that they need and that the user chooses to give them. So since the apps don't know about each other, the way that apps interact is through a series of contracts. So for example, if I bring the terms for our back up and I say that I want to share, um, let's say this guacamole recipe down here. I want to share that guacamole recipe. Now I see a list of apps that say they know how to share things. And it doesn't need to know about an array store and web pages. It doesn't need to know about graphics files or anything that might be passed to it. It just has to support the share contract. So I say I want to post it on Twitter. And I get the Twitter app here, a side window. I do like the share feature. Sign in. That's pretty cool. I just shared it from one app directly to the other. Another and contract that we support is sharing images. So if you played with it in Windows 7, searching can start any instant messenger. You can search within your libraries mm -hmm. and Not within bad. your email. But our telemetry says that uh, almost no one used search within their space. email from the service. Uh, space. <laughs> But what this lets you do is search within any apps that knows how to search. So, Internet Explorer, oh, no, very soon you're the only provider in this case. But if I say instead I want to use the Pickstream app and search Flickr for logical with it, or I want to see what people are posting on Twitter with a given keyword, you can do the same search and just go from whatever app you want to search in, and you can pick it in context and get directly to the search page on that app. No, so another example, yeah. um, actually. All right, so 
another contract is for retrieving files. And you might think, but now I say I'm going to post a picture and I want to pick something. You might look in your pictures library. And these are things that are locally on your hard drive. But your hard drive isn't the only place you can search. Because now people have a lot more uh, content online. So you have things that are on SkyDrive. You have things that are on Facebook. So if we do Socialite, which is our Facebook app here, and let's say, let's say we want to complain about the really odd picture of $175 a day Wi-Fi I found at the hotel in uh, Grapevine, which was uh, interesting. So here again, the Twitter app doesn't need to know about Facebook, doesn't need to know where that picture came from. It just declares, I want a picture. Windows asks the user about what picture the user wants to select, and the user can pick from any app, from any location, and it gets handed back as a handle to the Twitter app, and when it accesses it, it'll get pulled from Facebook or from wherever. So you can imagine, with a lot of different apps running, Sometimes people want to see what's running and see what impact it has. And one of the things that we've done in Windows 8 is try to separate what most people need and what enthusiasts and power users need. So our telemetry tells us that 80 to 90 percent of the time somebody opens Task Manager, what they're trying to do is kill a program. <laughs> so this is Task Manager in Windows 8 a list of programs, and a kill button. If you want something else, you hit more details, and then you switch to a different view that's targeted at the advanced view. There we go. Cool. So here you've got a list of apps that are sorted into things that have foreground windows, things that are not windows but are running in the background, and things that are part of windows. You have a heat map so that you can tell very quickly what's using your memory. What's using your CPU? Very clever. And if you want to drill into something, ever seen uh, service host on the XC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what's going inside it. Now you expand it, and it'll tell you exactly what services are running inside that instance of service host. So you can figure out what might be this video. You can open the performance tab and get it's funny they great point graphs that out. of what's going on right. with your CPU. That he would need to point that out. <clears throat> you can see the list of things that are being triggered when you sign in and when the computer boots up, and you can disable them from Task Manager. All very handy things, and I don't have a, uh, a large file that I can use for the demo, but you've got a similar split experience with the file copy dialog, that the starting experience is just a bar graph that says percent to completion. And if you hit more details, then you get a line graph that shows throughput over time. So you can see if your network is being very bursty and you're getting quick high bandwidth and then dropping to zero. I think I saw this on a diagrammer. So let me go back to the terms bar and take a look at one other thing in the settings menu. This is getting closer to the technologies that I work on. As, as I said, I'm... Oh, question? Sorry, have you changed that thing where there's an error during the file copy, where there's an error happening at the test on that thing before, and then the file So there are a couple different cases inside file copy, and there's a good post on building it that goes into more detail. But there are, files get sorted into three different groups. The things that we can run to completion, the things that we have to ask the user about, and the things that actually fail. And we'll run through everything that we can without asking the user, then we'll ask the user about everything that needs their attention, 
and everything that is just completely broken gets started. So here on the network list, I deal with wireless. We're looking at Wi-Fi and mobile broadband. Uh, one of the one of the things you see here is on the mobile broadband account, we have the operator's logo, and we have the View My Account link, which launches the operator's application. So, and this is a type of device app. And what device apps are when is a when you attach a hardware to a piece of hardware that has an associated app, will automatically download the app that goes with that hardware from the store. So in this case, the hardware is the SIM. When you put an AT&T SIM into this tablet, the AT&T app comes down even if you didn't buy the tablet from AT&T. You can uninstall it if you want, but if I take the AT&T SIM out, I put Vodafone in, I get the Vodafone app. So I always have the app that can show me what my actual usage is. <coughs> the other thing, which uh, with the perhaps overly protected Wi-Fi here, I may not be able to do a lot of demo, but we do some active management of your connection. So in Windows 7, if you had a docked laptop that had a mobile broadband interface, we'd be connected to AT&T over mobile broadband, and we'd be connected to wireless, and we'd be connected to Ethernet through the dock, and we'd be burning power on all three interfaces. Windows 8, will automatically handle that, and if you have another connection that comes up that's more preferred, that has all the same traits, so we're looking for internet and connectivity to the domain, if you have a connector joined to the domain. Then after 30 seconds, we'll let traffic die down on the old interface, and once the traffic has gone down, we'll disconnect it. So you see, if I plug ethernet in here, normal broadband would go away. Or if I connect it to a Wi-Fi network, 30 seconds later, but if I had an open streaming video, that would be continuing to use connection. Traffic doesn't <coughs> die down. We're not going to pull it out from underneath an active thing. The other thing I'd like to demonstrate quickly is some improvements on the boot experience. <coughs> so I'm going to come back over here to settings. And I'm going to shut down the PC. So it generally does not take too long here. second shut down, because I want to point out a couple things in the duty experience. But while we're waiting on that, uh, any other questions? Okay. This uh, seems optimized for a touch screen or a tablet-like device. What, yes. if, what if you were to install Windows 8 on a desktop or a notebook? Or... So everything that I'm doing with touch has a keyboard and mouse equivalent. Um, there again, you see kind of the split between the general consumer and the advanced user that we know a lot of advanced users leverage keyboard shortcuts because they want to get to things quickly. <coughs> and so even though we're optimizing for touch, there are a ton of new keyboard shortcuts in Windows 8, so you can jump directly to any of the charms. Uh, of course, Windows key takes you back to start screen. So it's basically the same interface. Yes, it is the same interface. anything that's similar to what uh, Android has, like Google uh, voice recognition or Siri on what window, Windows will support? So we don't have uh, like actual commands. For, uh, the question was, do we have voice recognition in Windows 8? So we've got some of the same voice recognition software that was there in previous releases that was targeted at um, accessibility requirements. So if um, for people who have difficulty using a mouse because of just um, motor capabilities, we do have some voice recognition for speaking what button you want to click on. But no, there is not a built-in voice search. Somebody could build that out, of course. <laughs> In most 
those cases, Windows 7 drivers work with Windows 8. There are a couple places where we have incremented the driver version. The older drivers will still work. Hmm. So, um, One thing that I showed in, uh, showed in passing but forgot to talk about, the desktop is there on the start screen. So when you want to, you can come back to desktop and existing legacy apps still run on the desktop. You still have Explorer. You have Internet Explorer. You can run in both nodes. So if you want to come back, so if you want to go to the desktop, you can do that. Uh, dropping one app on the side and having one app taking up most of the screen. That works with desktop as well. You can have a metro style app on the side, or you can make desktop a small one. So legacy apps are here. And the, um, this is, again, an example of the split between the mainstream and the power user. A lot of the advanced scenarios 